Well, good morning, friends and family of Burr Oak. We welcome you to our worship service this morning, and we will start with scripture from Hebrews, and this is out of chapter 12, uh, beginning at verse 25, and it says, see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Mm. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Go ahead, Mayor. Um, so I, I've had a song kind of stuck on my, on my head, and it, it started circling around my mind about three weeks before this whole thing broke, before the quarantine and the coronavirus and things got crazy at the hospital where I work, and before everything kind of went crazy, this song was stuck in my head. And the weird thing about the song that I'm about to sing for you is that I haven't heard it or sung it or thought about it in probably 15 years, maybe more. And then suddenly it was like I was sitting in the pews at church and it would be circling in my head or I'd wake up with it and it was on my head. It was, it was, I would wake up with it circling in my mind and I was driving, I think, my house a little crazy because I was trying to figure out the chords for it and playing it on the piano and Nehemiah didn't mind. He likes the song. And, uh, and I, it just was, just was stuck in my spirit, and I didn't know what it was for, because it's kind of a warning song. It's like a, it talks about how there's a storm coming. In the song, there's this storm coming, and there's lightning coming, and it's, and it's crazy, and there's darkness in the world, and, and it's about to get crazy. And, and I didn't know what it was about, this song, or why it was stuck in my, I knew it was from God, but I didn't know what it meant. And I thought maybe it was for my health, because a lot of you know that I haven't been well. And I haven't known what to do about that. So I thought maybe that's what it was, but I wasn't sure what it was about. And then when this all broke, I was like, oh, that's what it's about. <laughs> that's what it was about. And I don't know why God decided to warn me in this way or, or if I was supposed to do something about it at the time. I don't know. But I told mom about this, um, I see, it two weeks ago now. And then I was telling Kim about it, that, that I just had this warning in my spirit through this song about about the storm coming and and the song talks about how it's it's the solid rock of god on which i'll stand mm. that that's that's where we stand in the storm yeah. that's right. mm -hmm. and uh and, mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. me when i when i was singing yeah. this song and, and when i sang it back then that i loved that about this song that come whatever storm yeah. whatever lightning whatever darkness whatever the world can give you that there's a solid rock on which you stand and that's the lord and there's there's power in that and and i hope you guys enjoy this song and and can hear can hear the power in it for us in this storm yeah. amen Oh, 
singeth the Prince of Peace. Let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Blow as hard as it can. Let the wind blow. Upon the solid rock of God I stand. Let the wind blow. Trusting in the Lord of love, let the wind blow, let the wind blow. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church. I am excited about, about being with church in this season. I'm excited about the fact that so many people have risen up in faith. Mm-hmm. And with that said, as I was praying last night before I went to sleep, I was reminded of, of how much I miss our church family, mm-hmm. how, much, how much I miss coming together as one, and, and I was just praying about it and, and telling the Lord, and he's like, look forward to the celebration that's going to happen when we come back together, Amen. and so I am. I'm looking forward to celebrating with you guys. I'm looking forward to being able to hug you guys, but this morning, I also am looking forward to what the Lord is doing now, Amen. Yeah. And, and he's doing some really cool things. I I believe in, in this warning that the Lord clearly gave to Mary, and, and I believe in the things that the Lord is speaking to us in this time. There's no going back mm-hmm. to what we stepped out of. There's no going back to the Christianity and the walk with God we had before this pandemic hit. There's only forward and yeah. deeper into his presence. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment to just let the, the Lord's present rest upon us. And I ask that you guys do the same at home. And uh, then we're going to pray. Lord, in this season, I believe that you are, you've spoken peace over us that you are you are showing yourself mighty and strong in our weaknesses and lord that um you're showing you're shaking up our faith to prove you're unshakable yeah to prove that you are steady that you are constant and you are so faithful to your people and lord as we as we continue to enter in to what this season looks like and enter into the unknown, we trust in you. It's in you that our foundation is formed. It is in you that we can go forward. And it is in you that we get to stand yeah. and know yes, that you are God. You, Lord, Lord I, I give you all the praise and thanks. Yeah. All the praise and thanks for bringing us to a place where we had to depend on the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I just ask that as we continue in this service, that your spirit would be evident and that you would speak. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Well, as we continue in praise this morning, no matter what we're going through, we are the people of God, and we declare the word of the Lord, and we're going to declare it this morning as we praise. These are the days of Elijah.
These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice the year of jubilee and out of zion till salvation comes and these are the days of ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh and these are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, for the fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in the vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet go, lift your voice, the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes riding on the cloud. Shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion till salvation
it's better than the worship you this morning. As we, we finish our worship up this morning, we're, we're going to sing this last song, and it's, it's more than amazing. And as we look around at a, at the world events that are that are going on this morning, it's only the Lord that could have stopped the whole world in a matter of a couple weeks. It's it's amazing to me that that business as usual, that we just running on with our, our busy lives and, and doing whatever it is we do just suddenly was brought to a stop all over the world. And it was only God that could do that. But it's the same God that brought the world to a halt yeah. that is the God that forgives our sins. Mm -hmm. That's the God who loves us. The God that brings the dead back to life. Mm -hmm. And He is just so amazing. So as, as we enter into this last song, just know how much the Lord loves you. Know how much He cares for you. Know that he stopped the world to get your attention focused on him this morning. He is amazing.
Father, we thank you for your love, for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. We thank you that you are walking with us this morning. Lord, that you'll be walking with us tomorrow. Lord, we just give you praise, honor, glory. Lord, you are you are amazing. You are amazing. I'm going to be reading from Genesis. And we're going to be in Genesis 3, 6 through 9. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Is this the right scripture? No, I didn't think so. What's the right scripture? Sorry. 17, 24. So we had the wrong scripture on here. <laughs> And I thought that that sounded familiar, which means it didn't get changed. Well, turns out we're in 1 Kings <laughs> to, uh, 17, 24. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are the man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is true. All right, Kalia, come on up here. We're going to cover her in prayer. She's going to minister to us today. Super excited. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for Kalia. I thank you for her beautiful faith and just the awesome daughter she is. As, a, as you are king over her life, you have shown yourself powerful in her life. And Lord, I ask that you would anoint and fill her and that she would share your words with us this morning. We thank you so much for her and for her life. Amen. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys today? Doing well. I am good myself. You know, God is so good. He has done so many wonderful things, and I just cannot stop but thank him and praise his name for how good he is and all that he's done. And I have a message for you today that I'm excited to share with you what God is trying to speak through this passage. This passage that I have been asked to preach on is in 1 Kings 17, starting in verse 8. But I'm actually going to back up at the beginning of 1 Kings 17 because I want to share with you guys what is going on in this chapter and where Elijah is and you know where he got to be in this particular place and you know, what he had to do to get there. So Elijah's task is to tackle a problem of Baal worship that King Ahab has introduced to Israel in 1 Kings 16, 31 through 32. Now, Baal is the god of rain and fertility, so the god of life. And in a dry season, this is when Baal will, for what the people believe in, the Baal would submit to Mot, Ma is the god of death. And so when it, it is in a dry season, this is when the plants will die and the, you know, people will die of the drought. And so people believe that Baal would submit to Ma and that these gods have power and that they would just believe in him and you know, Baal and Ma who are Canaanite gods until you know, Baal would get revived where he would bring rain back to the land and it would grow again. So they didn't believe in Yahweh as the one true God. They just believed in these gods. Now, Elijah, you know, it was his task to deal with this and to talk to him about it. So in this passage that I'm going to be preaching on, we're going to see that Yahweh is the one true God and that these idols that they're worshiping has no power. So let's jump in right now and briefly look at the first few verses in chapter 17. Now, 
the prophet Elijah goes to King Ahab with a message. And he says, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. So right off the bat, Elijah is challenging them, saying that my God is bigger than your God. <laughs> that doesn't go well, so it doesn't go well for you know, hearing this with the people that believe in Baal and Mont. And so we see that God then tells Elijah to go hide by a brook, you know, the brook of Cherith. And there he is going to eat meat and he's going to eat bread and drink water there for, um, until God calls him away. And he'll eat um, meat and bread that is brought by ravens twice a day. And so while he is there, he drinks and he eats until the brook dries up. Kind of like our toilet paper supply. <laughs> so, <laughs> in starting in verse 8, we are going to see what happens when God calls Elijah to a different place from the brook. So starting in verse 8, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. And behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. Now, this word commanded is a little bit hard to understand. Um, it's basically saying that God set up the events for her to get there. You know, like an example is God led me to this particular place at this time for this particular person. That's kind of how we read that word. So continuing on in verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. Oh, sorry. Going on in ver yeah, verse 10, sorry. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in, in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends upon Rain, the, a rain upon the earth. So this woman is found where Elijah had said that he, at the place where Elijah said he was supposed to go. And this woman, she's a widow, you know, without a husband and just a small child. And she comes to the gate to gather some sticks and she finds Elijah, a complete stranger. And the stranger asks her, hey, can you get me some water? Mm, that doesn't seem so bad. Now, this woman doesn't have a husband, so she doesn't have much. And then in this season of drought, she really doesn't have much. And this stranger comes up and says, hey, give me some bread. Um, you know, as a mother, I would say, no, you cannot have this. This is for my son. But Elijah reassures her that if she were to go and give him some bread, one, my God is going to take care of you, and two, if you step out in faith, everything's going to be fine, and that your oil and your flour will not be spent. And so he's asking her to have a great faith, even though she doesn't believe in Yahweh as the one true God. And, that, that's, and she believes in her God. So that is a huge faith for her to do. But we see that starting in 15... And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. And the jar of flour was not spent. Neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. So God kept his promise. And that's amazing. The widow recognized that Elijah was an Israelite and served a different God. But she still stepped out in faith for God of Israel, rather than her God, Baal. And this shows that, you know, God was faithful to somebody who didn't believe in him, who had worshipped other gods. 
God promised that he would take care of her, her need. And here we read that God kept his, his word. He was faithful. When she was faithful, she stepped out and was faithful, and that, that was the reason why God was faithful to her. And then this proves that God has power over the land and the rain, and that Yahweh is greater than Baal. Now, I can say in my life that God has always provided for me in my household. These two years that I have been in Indiana, I have been in awe of what God has done for me in my life. And I can stand here on this stage and firmly tell you that Yahweh is the one true God. God is faithful to those who are faithful to him. We are going to continue on verse 17, but we're going to see a little bit of a change. Now, after this son, after this time, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, what have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son? So right here, she is, she's upset. I mean, I would be too, because my son just died. You know, she saw that her flour and her oil wasn't spent. You know, she was believing that, that God was going to take care of her, not her God, but, uh, or, but Elijah's God. He was going to take care of her, but now her son has died. So she is accusing Elijah here, thinking that his presence is what's causing her, her son to die. And then she is also thinking that God has power and that he's remembering her, remembering her sin, and that is why he had, this, her son had died. Now, it, first, for, uh, on the bright side, she is believing that God has power, so that, that's amazing right there. But it is, but it is kind of difficult for her to continue that faith. And then she's, she's, belie- uh, she's having some difficulties here. And then she's blaming Elijah. But we see that Elijah actually kind of agrees with her, thinking that maybe he is the cause for her death, for her, her, her son's death here. So let's see what Elijah says, starting in verse 19. And he said to her, give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourned by killing her son? So he doesn't comment on whether the widow's sin was the human cause. Now, Elijah knows that God has power over both life and death. So in the dramatic passion of, you know, he, sh- he stretches himself over the child three times. But, you know, God, he believes that God has this power. But, you know, he's not certain exactly what's going on and why the son had died. But we hear his response to, to God in verse 21. Then he stretches himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. So we're going to stop there right now. So that is wonderful thing. You know, Elijah's prayer was heard by God and the life came in to the child. Whether God can listen to to your prayer, whether you are alone, whether you're going to the grocery store or you're at work, you know, wherever you are, God will listen to you and hear your prayer. You know, the Bible teaches us that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, in a group or alone, he is there for you, and he's ready to listen. And whatever you have to say, yeah, sometimes our prayer is a little bit harsh. You know, 
confused and you were crying out to God saying, you know, why is this happening? Have you cursed me? Have you cursed the people around me? What is going on? You know, this might be our prayer. But the one thing you can't lose sight of is that God is in control. See, God showed this widow that he has power even over death and that the idols that she has worshipped all her life is meaningless. So we'll see the last verse of 24, her response. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. So Elijah cried out to to God, and God listened, and the life returned to the boy. So this was a miracle that finally illustrated that the Lord is the only true God, and God does not submit to Mott like Baal did. He does not submit to Baal. He does not submit to Mott. He is in control. He is he's bigger and greater. God can bring life out of death, and now, now we see, finally, that this widow is believing that Yahweh is the one true God. But we're not really told that this widow lays down her idols and serves Yahweh. You know, our idols and our sin in our life is very strong, and it can keep us from serving God, even though that we believe in God. Now, the people in Zarephath, they were worshiping idols, and we can tell that. But can you tell if you are worshiping an idol in your life today? Idols aren't just us praying and worshiping a different God than Yahweh. Idols in the Bible are completely different than the idols are today. Well, what is an idol? Pretty much anything that you put before God. If I read in the Bible that something's wrong in my life, but I don't give it up, that is an idol in my life. If I know that something I like, but I don't want to give it, uh, I don't want to give it up, and it doesn't bring God honor, but I choose it over God. If I choose to keep watching the show, keep listening to this song, I eat this. If I spend time with on that, if I have this relationship, if I, you know, if I do all these things that are not God honoring, if it influences me or others in an ungodly way, you know, if it takes away from my witness. Whatever it may be, it doesn't even come close to what an idol actually is in one's life. My only guidance in this is that you pray to God and you figure out what it is and let God tell you what it is uh, that is an idol in your life. Now, one idol I would like to talk about before I close today is the idol of fear and that the the fear that COVID-19 has brought. Now, Elijah was a human being. He struggled with fear, but he had faith and trust in God. And when God called him, he went and did what God had commanded him to do. Now, if we were to have faith and trust in God, that would require us to go and show people who don't know God what it means to have faith and trust in God. We need to live out what we believe in. Yes, we need to take the necessary precautions to not spread this virus. But we need to make sure we don't lose sight that God is in control. We need God to overcome so many things, physically, spiritually, financially, and our health, in our mind. But we here need to remember something. I'm here today to tell you that the same God who created this planet, the same God who brought Israel out of Egypt, the same God that raised that boy from the dead, is the same God that healed Brian Voss. And he is the same God that is here today. He brought you through so much in your life to get you where you are that he is not going to stop. He's not going to fail you today. He's brought you so far. He's not going to stop, and he's not going to fail you. God has overcome fear. He has overcome life and death, and he's overcome your present circumstances. We know that God, who always loves, who always provides, 
and never fails. If you are found in Christ Jesus, then he will take care of you. It's our job is to help those who don't know God because God wants to help those who don't know him as much as he does for those who do know him. We have a, I, don't, I know we're stuck inside, but we have so many ways to do ministry here. He wants the people to turn their eyes to him and to have faith in him. So we need to focus on the Lord. The church has a great opportunity right now that we can, can reach out to those people who are in desperate need, who are confused and scared, and they need to find God. And so the church needs to go out, and they need to come alongside of these people to show them that there's a bigger God. You know... The devil doesn't stop because of this virus, and neither does God stop because of this virus, and neither should you stop because of this virus. Come alongside someone who is in need of a God who is bigger than the idols that they're worshiping. Let God be in control and see how God will move. So let us pray. God, we thank you so much for what you have shown us today through this passage. And God, I just pray that you would help us to lay down our idols, to not let it control our lives, that you would show us what these idols are. And God, and I just pray that you would help us to be open and that you would help us, God, to be able to come along some, uh, come alongside of someone and to, just to show them, God, who you are and how much that you have done in our lives, God. Help us to be open and help us, God, to let you be in control and help us to put aside this fear and just walk by faith, letting you guide us. I pray all this in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kalia. That was a beautiful message. Perfect. Um, We're going to sing Let the Wind Blow one more time have Mary lead that and I just had a scripture really stirring in my mind it's Psalm 18 the beginning part of that it says I love you Lord my strength the Lord is my rock my fortress and my deliverer my God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation my stronghold I called to the Lord is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies there's a storm on the horizon oh let the wind blows there is thunder in the heavens oh let the wind blow let the rain fall down from the sky let the tempest roar till it's had enough I'm trusting in the Lord of love Let the wind blow And there is lightning in the distance Oh, let the wind blow Trusting in the great I am, let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. Blow as hard as it can. Let the wind blow. Upon the solid rock of God I stand.
We have a couple of prayer requests. One is from Chris Bailey, and he said, pray for Gerald. God put him on my heart this morning. We'll pray for Gerald. And Pastor Debbie said that Chris Nolan has been sent home from the ER, and he is still running fevers and still short of breath. And I am also aware that Kyle Rayburn, um, who is a friend of many of us, is also very sick with some intense symptoms. We had the opportunity to pray for him yesterday, but I want to cover him and Haley um, in prayer as well. So we're going to do that. Lord Jesus, I thank you for, for the reminder that, that you don't bow down to death, that you don't bow down to this pandemic, <laughs> that you don't bow down to circumstances. Lord, that you are the great I am, you are Yahweh, and you are our God. I ask that, that through this week and this time that you would reign over our lives, that no idols would have, have the opportunity to take place of what is rightfully yours. We thank you, Jesus, for the message Kaylee laid laid into our hearts this morning. And Lord, I, I want to lift up Gerald. I'm going to be obedient and, and ask that whatever, whatever is going on there, or maybe you just need to affirm your servant this morning, Lord. I ask that you would cover Gerald, Lord. I know that he has struggled with some pain in the, in the recent history, and I ask that you would cover, lift him up, and heal him. Let him walk in wholeness. You are a God of wholeness, and let his body walk in wholeness. Lord, I want to lift up Chris Nolan and his family. I ask that you would just bring healing there, help him to breathe deep, that um, you, would, you would ensure his health and his children's health, and Lord, his wife. I ask that you would cover them, Lord, and bring Laura some peace, Lord, over this situation, that you would just meet her where she is, and that you would give her peace over her son and his health. Lord, I lift up Haley and Kyle, and I ask that you would bring healing to Kyle, whatever is going on in his body, that you would bring it to wholeness, that you would help him to breathe deep, and that you would give him his voice back, Lord, and that um, you, would, you would bring peace to him and Haley, that uh, you would be God over, over this situation and over their lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the way you have met us and the way you continue to meet us here. Amen. Going to do the benediction. If we're ready. This week, we pray our God would reign in truth and he would be more than enough. Go in peace.